Listener's note, warning, this show is loaded with gist so powerful, it might just push you into a relationship and straight down the aisle. If you are not ready to hear wedding bells and say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes, listen at your own risk. Edgar doesn't lie. Check Edgar out. Okay. Zero eight one two zero three one four. Uh, this is the dumbest thing I've done, but I hope it works. Jesus Christ! Somebody should pick this call. Ah! Welcome to Unique Partners Limited, where we find your unique partner, uniquely tailored for you. For quality assurance, this call may be monitored. All recorded. Okay, Jesus Christ. This thing woke up. Wow, mad, mad, mad. Thank you for calling. To begin, please tell me your name and a brief description of what you're looking for in a partner. Oh, um, wow, okay. <laughs> My name is Edgar Eriaka. Most people call me Jack Edgar. I am a young, uh, fine boy from Edo State. Oh, oh, sorry. You said my name and a description of what I am looking for in a partner, yes? Hello? Are you there? Are you, are you talking about my spec? Okay. If that is what you mean, then. Um, my spec is simple. Um, nothing too much. I mean, a beggar doesn't have choice. I'm looking for um, a kind and intelligent woman. Someone who is mentally stable because many are mad, few are roaming. So, um, someone who enjoys laughing and loves to cook because I must eat the food of my labor. She has to be fair, not too tall or short. How did I forget to mention God fearing? God, I'm sorry, I beg. I don't want girl with the fear God, though. I beg. Um, she should be highly spiritual, but with some Nicki Minaj vibes. No Edo girls. Please, no Edo girls. I am dealing with my mother and my sister, so please. Eh, uh-huh. You know, I want her to have a very big back. Not her back, oh. Before I see hunchback. I mean, backside. Like, aka, bumbo. I want a small waist, blue eyes, tiny voice with gap teeth. I want someone with a small forehead, no stomach, and little or no family problems or health crisis. No record of spiritual problems or psychological issues. Hard working and loves to make money. Inner beauty, outer beauty, on top and below beauty. Beauty with the back of a beast. You get. Uh-huh. What else? What else? What else? What else? Anything good. Let me not ask for too much. Anything. Anything good. I'm actually very desperate. Anything. Wait, wait, wait. Uh-huh. Lastly, her sexiness must make other men open their mouths. Uh-huh. Yes, that one is very important. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. That's all. Thanks. Sorry, sorry, wait, wait, wait. I, I, I don't want any woman with hair on their leg or chest, though. I beg. I am the man of the house. We can't have too many men here. <laughs> that's all. Yes, yes, that's all. Wait. No, don't worry. That's all. That's all. That's my answer. Thank you, Edgar. I am scanning our database of over 10,000 uniquely available partners. Searching. Matching. This feels so weird. Analyzing. Mm. Please hold on for approximately two minutes. Your perfect match is what the wait. Two minutes? Okay, that's okay. I can wait. I mean, take your time. May amount. <laughs> I mean, if this is it, then no problem. I'd rather wait for those two minutes than go about looking for a girl to this Current store. wait time is... 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Your perfect match Did is they not just say wait. two minutes? What is really going on? Like, like who has that time to be waiting for babe for that long? This doesn't even make any sense at all. Ah, uh-uh. I swear down. Current wait Kai. time is two hours. What? Your perfect match is what, what, what are, are you Are you people okay? Ah, uh-uh. I the ones that bought phone for me or gave me battery. Are they playing with me? Two, two, two hours? On top of what now? If you don't have a babe for me, just say you don't have a babe. So, uh, so I should be here for like two hours. Waiting for two hours. Are you okay? 
who has who has current that time? wait time what did everyone request for that is six so days your perfect match fool. is what the wait you're a very big fool what kind of insult is this and you're still saying eh, my perfect match is worth the wait are you perfectly mad or are you waiting for madness six days six what current wait time is nine months jesus your christ this is the is worst the customer wait. service ever you don't even know your job is the customer not always right? See me see madness, oh, nine months? Kai, is my partner pregnant? I mean, what, are, what am I even hearing? What, what are they even saying? Current wait time is two years. Two years! Your perfect match Jesus is Christ. what wait. Two, wh- what? Two what? Current wait time is seven years. What kind of years. nonsense is this one now? Please leave a message at right. the tone. Jesus. Oh, hey, hi. Hi. Um... To be honest, this this is the first time I am trying something like this. So my friend told me he called your number and you guys found a partner for him. But you guys just said, I will never find a partner. Well, I just wanted to say that uh, God will punish you, punish your company and all your customers, including my friend. May your parents forget that they are married and may your life be so worthless that frogs will even thank God that they look the way they look. May thunder strike you, kill you, bury you, resurrect you, just to strike you again. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for your patience. We have found you a potential match. Oh, okay. okay. Her name That's is... That's interesting. Grace. Grace. Grace Amazing is 25 Grace. years mm. old. Loves all that you love and hates all that you hate. If you would like to connect with Grace, please press 1. If you want to hear more options, press 2. More options, Q. Or if you'd like a motivational quote to brighten your day, this press 3. Ah, finally, I don't get beef, Sha. <laughs> <laughs> that was only a joke. Your perfect match hasn't been created. Your current wait time is forever. <laughs> Hello? 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 Ah, nice one. Nice one. Well played. Well done. Check, check, check. This is a Check Edgar production. A Check Edgar production. This is for the single guys and the single ladies. Edgar doesn't lie. <laughs> why, 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 why am I, why am I, why am I still single, still single, still single, still single, why am I still, I want a wife and a family, this kind of life is not right for me. I told my guys how things can be When I fall in love, I fall for real I know you want me, don't waste my time I want a girl that is set and fine I'm going crazy, so please be mine God, please, why, why, why? Okay, if this is your first time tuning in Welcome to the show You're listening to Why Am I Still Single by Check Edgar The ongoing quest of Nigerians' most handsome man after your boyfriend, brother, or father, to find a partner, get married, and live an amazing life. I have been through situationships and full-blown relationships. I have talked about everything, dating in secondary school, my first ever girlfriend at Unilag, my adventure in online dating, Christine from church, and even my experience with a blind girl from Ibadan. Recently, I released an episode where I spent 25 minutes praying to God to finally bless me with a partner. So as you can see, I'm serious about this mission. For those of you who have been following my journey and sharing in my pain, God bless you. But for those of you tuning in every Friday just to laugh as if this is some comedy show, may God laugh at you when you lay your complaints before him. Before I dive into today's story, I've got a little gist to share. So earlier this week, I went to the mall to catch a movie. Just as I was leaving, this random guy walks up to me looking so excited. He's like, 
Sorry to disturb you, bro, but are you Edgar? I said yes. The guy with the deep voice, bro? I said yes. The guy that does those crazy phone pranks that distress relationships online, bro? At that point, I was like, yeah, yes. The guy, wait, what exactly do you want, Oga? Then he says, Sorry, bro. I'm a huge fan, bro. I love your content, bro. It's wild, bro. You look smaller in person, but your mind is crazy and I love it, bro. I was just there like, Okay, thank you. Do you want a picture? He goes, Nah, bro. I came to paint you a picture, bro. I was confused. Like, paint me a picture like... Are you are you an artist? Then he says, Nah, bro. I've been listening to Weiss. And bro, I am hooked. I love it. I love it. I love it. At first, I was like, What is Weiss? And then he goes, Why am I still single, bro? Your podcast, bro. Why am I still single? Why am I still single? Oh, by the way, guys, I have never called it Weiss or wise, or we say, or yes, or whatever. I always say it in full. Why am I still single? All right. Anyways, we got a drink and he started pitching this idea. He said, bro, I want to give you my space in December to host an event for the podcast, bro. People will come. People will turn up, bro. It would be sick, bro. It would be mad, bro. We'll have great music. You'll share your stories live and the audience will get to share their stories too, bro. What do you think, bro? I was like, um, I don't know, if the checkmates, now by the way, I call my fans checkmates. I was like, if the checkmates will be into something like that, why not? So guys, I am bringing it to you guys, my people, my checkmates. Should we do a live episode? Just imagine like a nice venue with about 100 people. I get to tell stories and you also get to share yours too. Maybe like five people will share their breakup stories. If you're down for something like that, you can shoot me an email at edgar at checkedgar.com. If enough people say yes, we'll make it happen. If not, I'll just be recording my episodes quietly. I don't want to Allah beg. Bro. Oh, and um, by the way, drum rolls, please. Some big giveaways are coming. We're celebrating the 10th episode of Why Am I Still Single in grand style. And I really want to appreciate all of you. So keep listening every Friday because some of you will win big. Like some of you will win the Why Am I Still Single shirts, caps, phone pouches. And I'm not joking. Some people might even walk away with mobile phones and cars. Stickers. Yes, cars, stickers. If you like, shake your nose in disbelief. It's your business. Edgar doesn't lie. You better believe that. I did not say cow. I said cars, stickers. <laughs> Lastly, something crazy, crazy happened. So I was just scrolling through Facebook the other day. Yes, I still use Facebook. Uh-huh. And guess whose profile I stumbled upon? Double M Amanda. Guys, I'm talking about the Double M Amanda, the first girl I ever liked in my life. If you haven't listened to the first episode about her, you need to. Should I invite her? Like, should I invite her to the show? If you think you would like to hear from Double M Amanda, um, just let me know, all right? You can send me an email at edgar at checkedgar.com. You know, you know, it could just be fun, I guess. All right, now that the gist is out of the way, it's time for this week's edition of Why Am I Still Single by Check Edgar. Get comfortable and be ready to lick your fingers because you're about to enjoy an episode I call Chicken Wings. Edgar doesn't lie. I'll be right back. Promo. Tired of waking up in the morning to a lonely bed? Has your pillow been giving you the silent treatment? Are you tired of rewatching old romantic movies, wondering when it would finally be your turn to fall in love while walking in the rain hand in hand with your soulmate? Well, we have absolutely nothing to solve your problem. In fact, I'm here to offer you nothing. No miracle cure, no magic portion, nothing. Not even a free t-shirt. Just the smooth, 
buttery sound of my voice. But if you have a business, a product, or even a secret family recipe for jollof rice that you think the world needs to know about, here is your chance. Until I get real sponsors and actual products, you will have to endure these silly ads. But you can change that. Yes, you can be the hero of this podcast by sponsoring an episode. Send me an email to edgar at checkedgar.com if you want to hear your business being advertised in the smoothest, most handsomely voiced way possible. Until then, well, brace yourself, checkmates. This is what you get. Okay, have you ever asked yourself if my deep voice is real? Like, have you ever wondered, did this guy train his voice or was it a gift from birth? Have you ever thought to yourself, does he talk like this all the time? Well, let me let you in on a little secret. My voice wasn't always this deep. In fact, back when I was in SS1, my voice was semi-tiny. He shook you, Abby. He shook you! Let me tell you a quick story. There was this girl I really liked in SS1. Now, I won't mention her name because she listens to this podcast. And the minute I do, she will start feeling herself. Ayomide, relax. It's not you. Relax. Anyway, the girl was super fine. She had the shape, the voice, the rich parents, and she was mad intelligent. You know the type. And let's be real, in secondary school, girls like that don't go for regular guys. They go for the best. Most of them were dating guys outside the school. And if they ever dated any of you in school, just know you weren't the only one on her list. But me, I didn't care. Whether I was Ayomide's 15th or 27th boyfriend. Wait, wait, wait. Did I just say Ayomide? Oh no, she's never going to let me hear the end of this. Ayomide, it's not you. It's not you. Calm down, it's not you. But honestly, yeah, I didn't care about my ranking. I just wanted to be on her list. I wanted to just date Ayomide. Guys, there is nothing I didn't do to impress her. I cracked jokes, bought her biscuits, helped her carry her bags. I even gave her my school cardigan when it was raining and she told me that it was very cold. Still, nothing. This girl refused to date me. Years later, after secondary school, she finally told me the reason. She said it was because I wasn't masculine enough. She said I looked like a chicken and that my legs looked like chicken wings. Chicken wings, guys. Not even lapso. Chicken wings. I wanted the ground to just open and swallow me. I was embarrassed. But to be honest, eh? to be honest, she was right. I was skinny and had no macho vibes whatsoever. Most of our boyfriends looked like they bench-pressed cars. It was my guy, David, who came to my rescue. He told me that, to be a real man, eh, I needed one out of four things. He said every woman would die for me if I had just one. And if I had all four, forget it. I would be unstoppable. Want to know what the four things were? Money, muscles and looks, beards, and an amazing voice. He said it was nothing about the character. Ladies, if you're listening, think about the guy you're with. Does he have any of these things? If yes, eh -eh, then David might be onto something. If not, well, let me know what David missed. Now, let's break it down. Back then, I didn't have money. My dad was an accountant. Every Naira was accounted for. Muscles, huh? Well, I went to the gym to work out. It did not work out. I had to walk out of the gym. My gym instructor is still blocked till today on my phone. The guy tried to finish me with Wait, we'll be right back after a quick break. Chapter 1 Careful what you wish for Once upon a time, there was a princess named Ayla who lived in a faraway kingdom called the Satisfied Land. There was a lot of sunshine in this little kingdom until exactly 4.14 p.m. each afternoon, when it would start to rain. It rained for exactly 23 seconds and then stopped. After this, a rainbow would appear over the glassy lake that engulfed the center of the country. 
turning it into a mirror and making the rainbow an momentous a tale of toil and triumph as for looks well you know these days i get a few compliments but back then the size of my head alone you could see my thoughts my literature teacher used to call me two heads are better than one i would let you figure out why as for beards ah hey there is nothing i did not try i tried everything spirit and vaseline aloe vera plus early morning urine even methylated spirits mixed with onion water i know some of you are writing these things down uh i pity you the only thing you will grow is hair inside your ear if you try it if you try it okay so my only option left was to develop a deep voice and when i realized that that was my only shot at masculinity i grabbed it tight like it was chicken wings and the rest as they say is history now why am i telling you this well you would need most of that info to really understand the story i'm about to share someone once asked me if i could date a violent person a violence was my ultimate red flag without hesitation i said no but when i got home it hit me i don't knowingly lied i remembered the truth that i had buried i loved a fighter once chisum the irony stung how did i meet chisum that's where the story begins it was at my friend's birthday party sometime in 2019 i was done with secondary school even university i already had a deep voice and so many women loved it but maybe not chisum chisum reminded me so much of ayomide she had the same captivating energy the kind that draws you in whether you want to be drawn or not she had a fantastic shape an amazing voice seemed intelligent and had this smile that could easily just start revolutions you know those girls you can't ignore when they walk by you have to look one fine fair babe like that ah she so was pretty eh pretty girl when i first saw her she was helping out in the kitchen cooking and frying chicken for the party something about her was just different it wasn't her looks it was the way she carried herself confident in charge with this quiet power that you don't often see she was the type of woman who had the room in check that leadership quality instantly just caught my attention and for some reason i liked her i love women who can lead you know cook and remain beautiful everything was looking attractive to me she soon was entering my eye i knew i had to say something so i made my way to the kitchen trying to figure out the best open line as i approached she looked up from the pan and the first thing she said wasn't hi or what's up it was have you eaten i i stammered a bit surprised at the directness i was like uh no not yet but i'm very 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 hungry she smiled slightly in my mind eh hey, i don't use the voice enjoy this one she turned back to the frying pan and said then grab a plate and stop looking like a chicken oh um, i knew she was going to be tough but for some reason eh i liked the battle that was coming so i grabbed my plate and she started serving me she now asked for my favorite part of the chicken i said the breast i like chicken breast there was this smile she had on her like she knew i was playing a game or something with her so she replied and said if you want the breast you will have to be more patient for now you can have chicken wings I don't know about you guys but I started interpreting that in my mind differently. I thought to myself, is she trying to say that for me to get her I need to do more or what? I just had a feeling the line was a subtext and meant something more. Anyway, we started talking and while she was cooking I was helping her out with the dishes. Guys, this girl had her life together. She was telling me her plans for her next few months and then for the next few years like she knew what she wanted to do. and sounded like nothing could stop her. It didn't even take long before we started laughing, sharing stories and genuinely enjoying each other's company. Now, 
Chisum wasn't the type to fall for just anyone. She was discerning, had standards, and was proud of it. But as the night went on, I noticed something about her. Chisum wasn't just confident. She was a fighter. And I don't mean in the cute, playful way some people argue. She had this edge to her like she was always ready to throw down if anyone crossed her line. I first noticed it when she got into a heated argument with another guy at the party. They were discussing something trivial, something about who should handle the music playlist, and it escalated quickly. The guy was trying to make his point, and Chisum wasn't having any of it. She squared up, threw her hands on her waist, and said, Look, if you keep talking to me like I am your little sister, I will beat you right here. Don't test me. Chicken. Since when? When that one starts? Everyone at the party were like, Whoa, yeah, yeah, mad, 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 yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I was stunned. The guy just backed off, probably realizing that she wasn't bluffing, and went to sit down. But I couldn't ignore the fact that she was ready to fight. I didn't even know how to feel. Later on, while we are still chatting, she vented about how much she hated men who tried to act authoritative or controlling. I just can't stand it. My mom taught me to be stronger. She said. Anytime a guy tries to tell me what to do or act like he's the boss, it just sets me off. While I respect her independence, I couldn't help but feel uneasy. We did like each other. There was chemistry. But her fighting spirit was hard to handle. Every time we talked, I kept thinking, do I really want to be someone who is always ready for a war? Over time, our friendship grew, and I started to realize that this wasn't just a passing crush. Chisum had this ability to challenge me and make me see things from different perspectives. She was vocal about her beliefs, strong-willed, and stood up for what she thought was right, always. It wasn't long before I found myself falling for her, not just because of her beauty or charm, but because of her strength. She later confessed that she liked me too. Apparently, my deep voice didn't hurt either. Ladies, take notes. David's wisdom still holds. But more than that, she said she appreciated that I listened to her, respected her opinions, and wasn't afraid to let her shine. Everything was making sense until months after the party when we decided to go on a date at a restaurant. By the way, we were already calling ourselves baby and boo. But we're not dating yet, too. We're not dating yet. I don't know how to explain this, but there are just some ladies or some people like that. We also had pet names. I would call her the bull and she would call me the chicken. I wanted lion, but she said I danced and had chicken legs. Don't mind her. Don't mind her at all. That part was a very big lie. I danced pretty well. Very, very well. Especially when I am sitting down. Ah, I am a powerful dancer. Anyway, my babe, Chiso, had told me about this fancy restaurant on the island in Lagos. She wanted us to try it. I mean, I was excited about it too. I wanted to spend more time with her in person, so it was a very good idea. When we got to the restaurant, the place was looking really, really nice and pretty. The aesthetics, the light, the music, everything made sense. The only reason why I'm not mentioning their name is because they did not sponsor this episode. Anyway, the place was fine. Super, super fine. We chose to sit near the AC and the TV. Some minutes later, one small, small girl like that came to get our orders. I told her I wanted chicken and chips. Chisum ordered Bolognese pasta. Now, you know that in Nigeria, when you order something, they don't just prepare it immediately. No. They will first watch like two movies, then go to the market to buy the items before calling the chef from the village to come and cook your meal. Because I don't know why you will order a meal at 2 p.m. and by 2.45, they are still telling you, hey, please be patient, the food is almost ready, just, just, just wait small, just wait small. I was boiling that day because the hunger I came with was as if they just released me from prison. Chisung was just smiling throughout. She was just making videos of the place, shining teeth up and down. Later, she now said, Baby, is it okay if we go out and make videos? 
I love the painting on the wall and I want to make videos and, and take good pictures. Is that fine? I mean, why not? We went outside, made videos, took pictures and the funniest part was that she asked me to hug her from the back in one of them. You know how lovers always take pictures here? Yeah? Exactly. I don't know why I was very shy that day but the picture came out great, sure. Only for us to go back to the restaurant and this guy and his babe were sitting on our seats. Chisum wasn't having it. She told me that she was going to tell them to stand up and move somewhere else. I did not want trouble and I felt like there were other seats for us to pick. The only issue was that this particular seat that we had chosen was close to the TV. Chisum was not having it. She started complaining. Babe, you know we got here first. We cannot just allow them to take it. At least let me have a conversation first. I want that seat. They saw us leave there to take pictures. I did not even say anything. The next thing, Chisum walked up to them and started talking to the lady. Sorry, excuse me. My boyfriend and I were sitting right here before you two came. Please, can you find somewhere else to sit? The other couple behaved like they didn't even see her. The girl was just laughing like her man said something funny. In my mind, I was like, this isn't good. Ah, Chisum just continued. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am talking to you, Ma. Please, you need to sit somewhere else if you want to continue this date. My boyfriend and I were here before you and we want to sit now. In my mind, I was already shaking like, what would happen next? Again, they ignored her completely. Chisum now said, If you don't move your things to another table, I will have no other option than to force you. From nowhere, the girl sitting down now said, Eh, see, you dare not. You can see in your life if they born you well, eh? Touch me. No, you touch me. Now, I knew it was about to go down. But Chisum acted very strange. Instead of attacking this lady, she now looked at the guy. She now said, Excuse me, sir. With all due respect, I am trying to control myself. Take your things and move to the other table. I don't want any trouble. The guy got up, looked her in the eye and said, If I don't move, what will you do? Now, this guy was huge. He had muscles everywhere, hand, leg, neck, everywhere. If you see his beards or hear voice or more, this guy was either a former bouncer, gym instructor or the guy you sent to kill assassins. Very strong looking. This guy was now wearing dark shades inside like he was an undertaker. Me, I was still close to the entrance of the restaurant. And everyone was just looking like, okay, okay, ah, what will happen next? What will happen next? Chisom now smiled and said, If you don't leave here in five seconds, I will report you to my baby. Eh? Who is your baby? Me. You want to report this killer to me? Chisom, I beg now. This issue can be avoided. Carry your bag and let us sit somewhere else. In my mind, I was just running mad. Is this a date or the date I will die? Chisom started counting. One. Two. Three. Four. The people at the restaurant helped her to complete it. Five. She now walked towards me and said, Baby, that guy just insulted me. Do something. Hmm. When a lady says, do something in that situation, she isn't expecting you to go there and crack jokes. Oh. She wanted blood. She wants serious begging. She wants you to teach the guy a lesson to the point where people are forced to separate you guys. Her message was clear. I just looked at my life. I said, okay. Okay, Edgar, it is well. I took about four or five boat steps towards the guy. His own babe was just there shouting, Break him quick. Ah, baby, break him quick. See him. Nonsense. Like I was bred. I just looked at the guy dead in the eyes. It was as if I was saying my last prayer. The guy took off his glasses and his wristwatch. His eyes were red. Mine were white. Like I'd lost all the blood in my body. The guy said, how far? Me too, I said, how far? 
his how far was more like he was asking me to start or like throw a punch first. My own how far was more like we don't have to do this thing, I beg. I beg. The next thing he said was, let's go. Me too, I said, let's go. His let's go was more like, let's start fighting, oh yeah. My own let's go was like, let all of us go home, I beg. The next thing I remember was that I was suddenly taller than this guy and in a flash, I had landed on the ground. This guy punched my stomach. I quickly vomited the egusi soup I had eaten the night before. Like, he punched my stomach, but it was my ear it affected. I was just hearing the sound you hear when they bring light in an estate. My large intestine was doing the work of my heart. In my mind, I was like, where is the security in this restaurant safe? Is this how I would die? The guy held my leg on the floor. That was when Chisom shouted. Leave him alone! The guy did not hear. Leave him alone! The guy did not hear. The third time... Leave him alone! From nowhere, Chisom just ran and punched the guy in the face. First time, second time, the third time. Like, she did it so fast, the guy started bleeding from his nose. Next thing, she just kicked him between his legs. The guy fell low and was struggling to breathe. That was when the security guards now came, holding the guy back from touching Chisom. His girlfriend was so upset, she was now shouting at Chisom. Uh, do you want to kill him? Do you want to kill him? Ah! Meanwhile, I was still on the ground, thinking about swimming. Why my brain was thinking about swimming, I don't even know. I just felt like I was in a pool and I was swimming. The punch to my stomach had made my own brain go on factory reset. When I was able to get up, the big guy was so upset. He still wanted to fight. Chisom had picked up a fork from another table. I will tear you down. You are nothing but a piece of chicken wings. After a while, the big guy and his lousy girlfriend left the place. I later met him somewhere else, but that one is a story for another day. Now, Chiso came to meet me and asked me if I was okay. By the way, I was still in the pool. So I told her I was super fine and chilled. She was just apologizing. So sorry, Edgar. So sorry about everything. Don't mind him. He's only stupid. I'm sure you would have taught him a lesson if he, if he was still here. Chicken. In my mind, even if I fight that guy 10 times, chances that he will win me 11 times. I stood no chance. The useless waiter later came back and said that our food was ready and asked if we wanted her to pack it for us. Chisum said no, that the seat she fought for, she wants to use it. That was how our date now started. Chisum was trying everything to just make me laugh, but I couldn't. A video had gone viral with me on the ground trying to swim in a restaurant. How would I be laughing at that point? Just when I thought the night was over and nothing silly could happen again, the tiny girl that was with that huge guy came back to the restaurant. This time, she wasn't even wearing the short gown she wore before. She was wearing joggers and a plain shirt. I knew something was about to happen. In my mind, I was like, who asked me to come out today? Who asked me to come here today? The girl started to para. She was upset. She said that my babe drew blood from her boyfriend and that she has come for her own share. That if my babe doesn't beat her, she is not leaving. She started making noise that she so must beat her. She so must beat her. The girl wanted to fight. She wanted to fight bad. And she wasn't going to stop until she fought. Now, she so had the mind to now tell me that. Oh, baby! Baby, she's spitting in my food. Do something. I started begging this girl to calm down. That she was overreacting. The next thing that happened, before I could say Hala Madrid, I had received two slaps from this lady. You know those slaps you hear so fast, you don't see the hands move. Exactly. I didn't even know she had slapped me until like 30 seconds later, when my face started itching me. Chisom got upset but didn't react. Chisom would never beat a lady. The next thing, this lady now said that Chisom was a cheap slut who sleeps around with different men she can control, just like her mother. Ah! Chisom looked at me 
And what I saw on her face was the same kind of anger you get when you lose a family member. She got up, closed her eyes and just pushed the lady so hard to the ground. This lady hit her head on the table and fell head first on the tiles. She passed out immediately. The restaurant was quiet. Chisum took her many plates of spag and poured it on this lady. Never speak about my mother. Chisum looked at me and walked out. The people at the restaurant didn't move. The lady on the ground didn't move. I was still shocked about how I got slapped twice and I did not even notice. From nowhere, the security guards came to carry this girl from the ground and some guys just took her to the hospital. Guys, it was so intense that day. I didn't even end up paying for my meal. That's how intense it was. Everyone just left. It was an ugly scene. I followed them to the hospital and got treated myself. When I got home, I saw about 28 missed calls from Chisum. We met three days after the crazy night. I tried to talk about the date, but she acted like the fight never happened. She only talked about how she noticed that I ate the chicken wings like a chicken. She saved my number on her phone as chicken wings, and she said she enjoyed the date because I was very composed. When she asked if I still loved her, I asked her if she would stop fighting. She was quiet for some time, and she said no, that she can't. She said she saw her dad beat her mom so many times that she had to live with the scars in her mind. She promised to try, but I knew it was a lie. Our friendship started dying gradually. She had a couple of other fights, by the way. And the funniest part was that she would care less whether you were built like a bull or you were soft like a chicken. She would fight if she had to. So why am I still single? Well, that's simple. I wasn't going to date a lady who couldn't control her actions and fight every guy who was plainly stupid. I love Chisum, but I love my life way more. And to everyone who thinks I am weak just because I choose not to fight, well, maybe strength isn't about throwing punches, but knowing when to walk away. My peace of mind is priceless and no relationship is worth sacrificing that. So if being single means keeping my sanity intact, then I'll wear that label with pride like an expensive chicken wings. And that's the end of this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then don't forget to subscribe and share the podcast with those who are single, dating, or married. Rate the podcast and drop a comment. And yes, you can donate and support the podcast. $3 will go a long way. If you have a story to share, then please send it to me through my email, edgar at checkedgar.com. Or for a quicker response, chat with me with the chat box on my website, www.checkedgar.com. I'll respond in three hours. I promise. Edgar doesn't lie. I have received over 40 different stories from different checkmates around the world. Also, let me know if you would pull up for a show in December where we get to share stories like this in front of an audience. Remember, the podcast ends the day I get married. So don't forget to tell your beautiful friend that Edgar is single and he would love to go on a date with her. If that lady is you, please send a message to my email at edgar at checkedgar.com. Edgar doesn't lie. Check Edgar out. See you guys next week Friday.